Successful farmers are mostly having a different lifestyle and self-development. They have a chance to do more thinking on their own. How best to develop the land? What additional crops to be started next month, next year? The nature of the market for their surplus produce, etc. Hands-on classrooms offering knowledgeable such subjects as geography, mathematics, agriculture, economics and liberal arts can be attended daily right on their plots of land. If you adopt the new theory, you survive. It certifies besides clean and safe food. Farmers enjoy good health. The family members live together. All this constitutes national security. Sufficiency economy means national security. We learn from His Majesty's speech of the 4th of December 1994 that the royal initiated new theory consists of three phases, each providing a gradually stronger immune system for those who put the theory into practice. As of today, the Cooperative Community Project, under the directorship of Pra Rajapi Patanaton, is one of the fully integrated Royal Initiated New Theory projects in existence. All three phases have been integrated. During the past few years, the number of villagers in the vicinity of Khao Wong district, Kalasin province, who relocated or worked in large cities, seemed to be smaller. Ponds and crops were springing up visibly on small plots, thus binding the farmers to the land of works all year round. Faith and trust in the monk, their local leader, provided the catalyst to the coming together of a group of farmers in Kong Chai sub-district of Kalasin to form the Taiwan Patana Agricultural Cooperatives. At the time of selling, produce from the various paddy fields became one crop as a means to hedge against underpricing. Brainstorming and joint trading mean positive outcome as they are the key to increase the farmer's bargaining power. Disastrous it would be if they tried to do it individually. That's why the cooperative system in our country needs to be reviewed and revived. Without this, the country would head for hardship. In the past, we went our separate ways. Each selected a place to his liking and away he went, like a street vendor. Of course, we were treated too unjustly then. Rice containing higher than 14.1% moisture is sold through the co-op channel to general buyers, whereas rice with up to 14% moisture will be processed at the Royal Sponsored Mill, which was built and equipped with machine financed by His Majesty's own private fund. They might get a higher price somewhere else, but might also be cheated at the weighing machine. Even though the price offered here is a bit lower, one can be sure that our scale has never been tampered with. The Royal Sponsored Rice Mill is presently equipped with a grain sorting machine controlled by the microprocessor to detect contaminants, as well as off-coloured grains. What remains is prime quality rice sought after by both domestic and foreign consumers. Larger sized enterprises like Rice Mill and Passion Fruit Juice Cannery have to rely on government budget or financial support from the office of the RDPB. After the Royal Sponsored Rice Mill, there are other rice mills and large-sized enterprises. Operations of one of the most modern rice mills in Thailand are progressing side by side with the effort to conserve conventional rice farming under the organic farming project. The Cattle Bank for Agricultural Purposes, which gives out loans of cattle to farmers, consists of two projects. One, the Royal Initiated Cattle Bank Project Farmers, under the auspices of the Department of Livestock. And two, the Cattle Bank Co-op Community. The latter gets its supply of cattle by redeeming them from the slaughterhouse. The cattle are loaned to farmers free of charge, on condition that the bank takes possession of the first calf that is born so that it can be loaned to the next borrower. The farmers can, however, keep all other calves as well as the cow. Needy farmers have water buffaloes as their source of manual labor, which partially help cut production costs. Moreover, the manure can be used as fertilizer another way to cut costs. This here is Toto, the male breeder. People in the neighborhood bring their cows for breeding here. We raise the cattle when they are alive, bury them when they die. That's what we do. The venerable monk says we are not to distribute or process, only bury. 
The prohibition against the killing of these breeder bulls and cows is in itself a religious precept. Reward him who has done you a favor. That is intrinsic in the development concept. By location, the area is fit mainly for rice cultivation. Thus, community activities are often rice orientated. However, female farming villages in particular are capable of other supplementary occupations in the context of the cooperative system. These co-ops are not profit orientated. Their remarkable success is based on the self-help development, whereby external assistance is sought by necessity, rationale and priority. An annually increasing number of members testify their success. Starting capital worth only 10,400 baht, to date over 1,900,000 baht. We've got excellent cooperation from all members. Simultaneous with economic development, foundation for a strong community on the path to sustained development has been laid through small communities within the cooperative community scheme. There are presently 13 co-op communities nationwide. Characteristics and distinctions vary according to the local conditions, as well as sociological environment. From self-supporting households, the people have come together to form an ever larger group within a cooperative community that proves socially as well as basic economically strong. In fact, strong enough to eventually seek external ventures through cooperations with other social groups. It is how strong community takes shape and the very embodiment of unity mentioned on many occasions in His Majesty's speeches. It was all formulated after His Majesty's long years of experience. After all, the new theory concept was first referred to some time after His Majesty turned 60. In the context of civil service, that would be the age after retirement. They were virtually His Majesty's lifelong experience because they had been gathered in all the years he worked. The interrelated three-phase new theory and the three-leveled water resources development are but one example of an impressive array of agricultural development methods His Majesty has initiated. A local development project that is suitable to the prevailing local conditions can benefit a larger area. When this happens, one can expect growth and prosperity finally spreading from larger areas to all parts of the country. But to achieve this, there must be good cooperation between all parties concerned, academicians as well as the government sector. That is why I always say sufficiency economy and the new theory are the key components of the growth of the country, provided that people learn the virtues of perseverance, endurance, patience, not talking too much and not being engaged in disputes. That was the new theory, which His Majesty the King initiated for his farming subjects, especially those impoverished ones. It is evident that the living standards of the farmers who came to adopt the new theory are not destined to remain the same forever. Whether the quality of life will be upgraded for them is contingent on a steady foundation which will enhance sustained progress.